The Digital Scene Show is sponsored by Light Panels, makers of the world-renowned Emmy Award-winning green-friendly LED lighting systems. Check them out at lightpanels.com. Michael, welcome to the Digital Scene Show here at HD Expo 2009. And you are with? Um, my name is Michael Cioni, and I'm with a company called Light Iron Digital, which is a digital intermediate color correction house for file-based film and television. I see. And uh, tell us a little bit about DI and what, what does it entail for the people that are not very familiar with that? Well, DI is basically used to mean the process of color correction between a film origination and a film output. But now DI has kind of changed, and it's really just synonymous with the word color correction. So if you say color correction or DI, you probably are talking in the same because you're uh, starting now with file base, right? You're, you're starting out with files, and you may end up with files or, or optical discs or with film. But the DI is really the color correction process, uh, which we're a part of. I see. Now, what is the difference between doing it in a, in a DI studio like yours, a post-production studio, and somebody do using a Final Cut Pro, the three color corrector? Absolutely. Well, the great thing about DI today is that it's a very scalable market. It didn't used to be scalable. Everything was, you had to go to the heavy iron to get the job done. That's kind of why we call ourselves light iron, because we're sort of suggesting there is a place for heavy iron, but there's also a place for the light side of it, and that might be the person that does it themselves. What's interesting is if you take advantage of a program like Apple Color, which comes bundled with right. Cut for free, you've got Apple Color. The system that I'm uh, working with today here is called Scratch, made by the company Assimilate. And then I also own a system called Pablo, which was made by Quantel. Now, the Pablo is close to half a million dollars. Scratch is about $12,000. And Color is about free if you buy Final Cut Pro. Right. The interesting thing is all three of those programs basically color correct the same. So there isn't really a better or worse system for color correction because lift gamma gain control, highlight saturation, power windows, and secondaries, that's all the same across the board. What changes is what the programs do outside of color correction and the speed in which they do it. For example, if you work with like Apple Color, you might get a great look, which I've used many, many times, and I endorse that product, but when it comes time to output it, sometimes people feel it gets stuck inside of color, and it's hard to get out, and it takes time to get it out and put it all back together. True, because you got you got to render it you out. you got to render, and you got to maybe adjust for speed effects and transitions and things like that. And any changes you want to do later, you have to go back and re-render. You have re -render. To migrate back, re-render, and then recompile the uh, list at the end. With a system like Scratch, there's no rendering at any point in time. And it takes advantage of the NVIDIA series of graphics cards. Uh, one of the bundles that they sell for 11000 has the NVIDIA 3600 card with the SDI daughter board. So your graphics card actually gives you SDI monitoring out to a monitor or projector or something like that. And that's just right out of your CPU. So you don't need extra hardware to process out pictures on a 709 display, for example. Sure. And that's totally render free. So you're color correcting, hit play, watch it. When you're done rent color, coloring the whole thing, you hit play, you're, you're done in a completely render-free environment. And so the price point that you're paying for is based around a software and semi-hardware solution that accelerates that process. So that solution would be for a small post-production studio house? Absolutely. I mean, at $12,000, you can amortize that sure. over the course yeah. of, let's just say, 24 months to only a few hundred dollars yeah. a month. So it's really not a really expensive system. And what would be the workflow, let's say, from a Final Cut Pro to that back to Final Cut? Well, a lot of people use this with the RED camera because uh, RED is a very popular file-based acquisition tool. So what will happen is you would, let's say, transcode your footage in RED Rushes or RED Cine or RED Rocket or something like that. And if you're working with ProRes files, you have cut them and you got your list done, break it into five or six reels, and then you just send the EDL into Scratch. And then you attach the original drive um, with the R3Ds to Scratch, and Scratch automatically rebuilds the timeline, and it swaps out .MOVs for .R3Ds. I see. And this is actually an instant process because it's a data conform. It's literally, it sits there and thinks for a second, analyzes the list, analyzes the drive, and then all of a sudden your movie just pops up because it's just populating it based on time code, I.O. points, sure. and our 3D source names. And because Scratch is SDK compliant with RED and they follow the software development kit, they have all those metadata streams that you can uh, change 
that you have in color or red alert or red city. So if you're familiar with those programs, once you open Scratch, like, oh, I have my camera RGB or red log or red space or rec 709, all those things are still there. So they're familiar. You just now have a lot more precision control and speed over the color process. Well, Michael, you're obviously very knowledgeable about the DF process and color correction. Um, we're almost running out of time, but can, if you can give one tip to independent filmmakers, corporate video makers, um, as to how to improve their video from a color correction perspective. Um, any one tip that stands out that says you gotta do this, what would that be? One tip for people, if you wanna change your footage to go from good into great, the yeah. first thing you gotta get acclimated with is working in log space. What happens with most people is they see a picture and it's in linear space, so there's already a preset black and white point, and then they try to twist and push and pull it and try to get something, and that's where the footage will more or less fight you in the process. With log space, and red can come out of the camera in linear space like red space, but you can use these software tools to convert it to red log. If you put it in camera RGB red log space, your image will drastically increase in dynamic range, but it'll look milky to your eye, so it'll look wrong, but then you start using the color tools to shape and set your own black and white point, and the image will be much more dynamic, there'll be more contrast range, which will result in less shiny or plasticky or quote unquote video or HD looks. And that's how the red starts to look more cinematic, and that's that's a big tip for people that want to really get the most out of their uh, pictures, even if you're just working with ProRes. Michael, that's a fantastic tip. If people want to get a hold of you or, or find out more about your company, what's the URL? Sure, if you want to get a hold of us, you can call us um, at Light Iron Digital, www.lightirondigital.com. And uh, my name is Michael Cioni, and there's quite a bit of us uh, at Light Iron that would be happy to help anything you need. Michael, awesome. Thank you so much. You're Good welcome. to meet you. You're welcome.